This is Ray Stokes in the oral history section of the TCOM library. Today, August the 21st, 1989, I have the pleasure of being in the office of Dr. John R. Peckham. Dr. Peckham is the Associate Dean of Medical Education and is Director of the Center of Osteopathic Research and Education more commonly called CORE. Doctor, I'm going to call you Dr. John. I don't know you well enough to do that rather than saying Dr. Peckham. Dr. John, I want to get acquainted. I know a little of your background, but I'd just like to know how long you've been here and how what brought you to TCOM in the first place. Well, I think I came to uh, TCOM in 1979, right? Uh, Ten years then. Right. My, my brother-in-law was on the original faculty here in the school, and uh, so we, I came down to visit. Now your brother-in-law, that would be? Dr. Joel Alter. Joel Alter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, we'd come down here to visit, and he would always tell me that he thought that I should be a faculty member at this school, and always painted a picture of the opportunities that were here. And for several years I looked. And for one reason or another, uh, nothing happened. And then one Christmas, uh, he took me to see Ralph Willard. And uh, Ralph Willard was the the man who who brought me here, pure and simple. He painted a a vision for this institution that I could see and understand. He was. As everyone knows, a, a strong osteopath philosophically and uh, a strong individual. And uh, with that, I went back to Colorado, where I've been in practice for 15 years. And uh, where in Colorado? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. And went about the business of closing my practice and uh, coming to Fort Worth, which I took me nine months, but I got here in September. 1979. Dr. George, I mean Dr. John, I tell you I'm all screwed up today to start with. Uh, uh, Dr. John, I had George Lubel on my mind I guess. Uh, I'm remiss because instead of making that mistake, I made a mistake in the beginning. I introduced you with the wrong title. You're the Dean or Associate Dean of General Medicine. and I think I said medical education. So we got that corrected. Now Dr. John, when you uh, came here in 79, and you say Dr. Willard was responsible for your coming. Uh, what was your assignment when you first came? Well, he, uh, he put me in the physical, or the uh, uh, preventive medicine, physical medicine department. He, he didn't quite know what to do with me. He didn't, I was uh, certified in general practice. Mm -hmm. My interest was manipulative medicine. And he didn't quite know where to put me, so he finally put me down in uh, River Plaza with uh, Wayne English. And when I arrived there, Dr. English wasn't quite sure what to do with me either, as I remember. <laughs> so I was uh, neither fish nor fowl. But uh, I uh, began to find my way around the institution and did uh, a lot of manipulative medicine with the uh, rehabilitation patients. I tried to find some kind of uh, legitimate work within the curriculum, which was difficult uh, in that department, but uh, fun. And, uh, from there it evolved that uh, I realized in retrospect that uh, Ralph Willard, Willard mentored me a lot. Before I knew it, uh, I was the chairman of the admissions committee. Uh, I didn't feel that I was ready to do that, but he didn't give me much choice. And uh, before I woke up, I'd been the chair of that committee for four years and enjoyed it a lot. And, uh, in the meantime, I taught some on campus and taught a lot up at, uh, in, at Michigan State. Uh, with uh, hands-on manipulative medicine courses. So 
So that was the beginning. You know, I first met you, uh, uh, Dr. John, uh, when you were talking about down the River Plaza. You were over in the building across from the plaza where the bowling alley was. That's the one thing we had in common with bowling alleys. We were in one bowling alley, then we moved into the building where the bowling alley was above us, I believe. First time I met you was uh, we were in a, a, a class to learn how to use our new telephone system. That's, I never will forget that. That was the first time I'd met you. I remember. All right. Now then, uh, uh, after your association here and being uh, in uh, manipulative medicine and, and preventive medicine, rehab medicine, down at, uh, with Dr. English, uh, when did you um, uh, move into more general medicine? Well, in... Uh in about 1982 or 83, and I can't remember which, uh, Dr. Willard wanted to put together a, something within the institution that dealt with osteopathic philosophy and uh, education and research, and he wanted it to be a, take the form of a center, something that would be an umbrella that would reach across a number of departments and, and try to coordinate those efforts. So. After a year of a task force, which Dr. Kaur chaired, a uh, proposal for the center went forward, and uh, I subsequently was, was took the position as, as associate dean and director for Kaur. And uh, you've had that assignment now about five or six had years. Had that ever since? Had that ever since? And Kaur was a, a really was a, a one-man operation. Of myself and a secretary, and uh, in, in, at least until the last few years, and uh, we began to, to structure uh, some programs which would further that charge to the center. Then, in about 19, I can't remember, but I'm going to say 85 or 86. Uh, I became the acting chairman of manipulative medicine for, well, I did that for two years or so until we uh, appointed, uh, searched for, and found a new chair. Was that long about the time that Dr. John Harrigal had his right. problem? Right. And so to fill in there while he was out of pocket, right. uh, I took that responsibility. And. Uh, then in about, uh, well, two and a half, three years ago, however that's going to shake out, uh, I became the dean for, for general medicine, which really... Uh, well, can you give me a little bit of a, an explanation of just what uh, that entails? General medicine is uh, Department of uh, Public Health and Preventive Medicine, general family practice, manipulative medicine, humanities, and then the center. So that's that reporting line. And we're soon going to restructure that division into a primary care division, which will include uh, pediatrics, OB-GYN, internal medicine, psychiatry, plus these others that we mentioned in an effort to try to get the people who are the primary entry physicians all in one division so they can work together more cooperatively. Accomplish that within the next few days. What uh, now? You've made a, a more of a contribution than you've shared with me so far. Uh, as you look back on your ten years, what stands out in your mind as to what the, uh, experience you had? Uh, hopefully, that was successful. But if it wasn't successful, at least tell me about it. Well, I think if I just look back at the 10 years, um, for me personally, uh, and without equivocation, I, I can't, I can tell you that I don't think I've ever been happier professionally. I think that this school is perhaps the best in the profession right now. I don't think everybody knows it yet. 
well, that's all right. I'm not, I'm not questioning you other than just let's, give me a little more clarification as to why. Well, we're going to talk about that, all but right. I want to good. just good. stage that because I think that to have a, have the chance to be part of the growth of the of the institution is is, a, is an opportunity that very few people ever enjoy, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that I came at the very best of times, and I think that we and I've lived here under two different administrations, both of them very different both of them very necessary, and I think that we see uh, a natural kind of evolution of a maturation of the institution in this period of 10 years, which in retrospect is, is remarkable from those first few very, very strong folks that carried the load, and uh, certainly they were small in number, to suddenly uh, waking up to a school of 150 faculty and large budget and a magnificent kind of physical resource, uh, those are fast tracks in anybody's league. And uh, there's little question that our product is extremely competitive, uh, not only within the state now. Uh, I just think that I couldn't have asked for a whole lot more what I got. Now where, uh, you mentioned about this being one of the better schools, can you kind of flag some of the reasons as to why you make that statement? You're pretty familiar with all of the osteopathic colleges. Well, there's no question, you know, if you look at external exams that we're doing exceptionally well in the last few but I think it's more than that. Uh, there's no question that the basic science experience is probably as solid a program as there is in any osteopathic institution, and I would venture to guess that it's without question the best. Uh, on the clinical side, uh, because although we have a rather labor-intensive kind of a program, and certainly we have, uh, there are some things where we could in, have room for improvement, which there always are, the fact remains that uh, the core faculty is extremely capable. The, the basic programs in uh, general and family practice are fairly unique. Their uh, core programs, internal medicine program is, is uh, exceptional. We probably, uh, certainly in my mind, although it's my bias, uh, we have the quality uh, manipulative medicine uh, program in the United States. And the cumulative total is that uh, well, we're doing a good job, and we're doing a good job around what we're charged to do by the state. We're turning out GPs, we're turning out osteopathic GPs. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. What, uh, are you pleased with the percentage of graduates that are in manipulative medicine? No, I'd like to see more, but I believe that we're going to see, uh, I always think there's a lost generation out there for us in osteopathy anyway. As we grew in the 40s and 50s trying to be like everybody else, we, uh, we sometimes lost sight of what we perhaps should be philosophically. And I think that once we got in the position to uh, where we competed in the same on the same field with everyone then we're strong enough that now we're beginning to see a resurgence of, of those kinds of things and, I, and quite frankly I think that's what the public's looking for I think the public sometimes is smarter than the doctors I think the doctors don't always want to hear them but it's the things that we are as a profession that that the consumer's asking for. The timing is just absolutely right for us. I know a number of our graduates that I, I used to have the opportunity to visit out in the field more than I do now, but uh, it was just on rare occasions back in the late 70s and early 80s when I was visiting, 
uh, but I've noticed that the trend in about the last five or six years, I, I know we have more graduates, uh, and I keep touch on what their specialties are. And I know we have more now that are in uh, what we call MT, manipulative uh, therapy uh, or treatment, uh, than uh, we've had in the past. No, I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah. I, and I think that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. That gives you an indicator that uh, there's a greater majority of the class with good skills and good yeah. and, uh, and interest than we've had here in the past. Well, Dr. John, so far everything's you're, you're encouraged about what you have experienced in the 10 years that you've been here, and you've given me a pretty good little outline of, of what you've been involved in. Uh, and currently, I, you, I understand what you're doing. Uh, what is a projected future? Uh, what, what do you think are going to develop for the next, in the next 10 years? Well, I suppose if I... The this, that, well, I understand you know, that, but you, you can go out on a limb and, and we're going to we're going to continue to improve the quality of the not only of what we take into the institution, but what we put out pure and simple. There's little question we're going to continue to improve the quality of the clinical training program. I think we'll see that come in very tightly under the school umbrella. We're going to get in the residency business in a in a big way. Can you clarify that a little? Well, we'll see residencies, obviously expanded residencies in general family practice. We'll see expanded internal medicine. I would hope that we'll see shortly new residencies in psychiatry, preventive medicine, occupational medicine, pediatrics, uh, emergency medicine. Uh, all of those are potentials. I think that uh, the clinical research program will uh, begin to expand. Uh, certainly in the last four or five years, uh, since Dr. Richards has come, uh, came to the institution as president, that they, we have embarked on a course of, uh, of attracting quality faculty. And the people are what make the program. And we'll continue to see an upgrade in, in faculty throughout the institution. Um, all of those things will occur as long as we keep doing what we're paid to do. Good. Well, it's good to hear that. There's one thing that you uh, alluded to a moment ago about the experience you had since you've been here. You served about four or five years as chairman of the admissions committee. Now, I know back in those days we, we probably had more of a uh, uh, demand that we actually had supply it might have changed in the last year or so but uh, give me some of your thoughts about what occurred during some of those experiences well we had a lot of fun <laughs> early McElroy was staffed to that committee and we did have a good time and laughed and fussed around a lot but I think that was a time when there was an institutional headset that we're going to work very hard to attract uh, non-traditional students with uh, other life experiences and uh, sometimes we'd be a little uh, lax on uh, some of the, uh, we, we, let's say it another way, we put a lot of stock in the non-cognitive kinds of things and uh, in a way we got in trouble because some of those folks, although they were had marvelous qualities, were unable to sustain the the rigor of the academic program. And uh, on the flip side of the coin is when we attracted people like that who did survive, they became excellent physicians. You never, you never can really make that judgment. But uh, I was always intrigued with it. I think after experience like that, you know more about the biases of your fellow admissions committee members than you know about anything else, and you realize that it's an imperfect process at the very best. <laughs> but uh, certainly uh, one that's really important. And uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from it. Well, uh, uh, our, with our relationship to the flex uh, experiences that we've had, uh, we're improving on that to a great extent. No question. I think that, uh, you know, if we don't 
compete in the, in the flex arena and compete very well, we're not going to have an institution. And so it becomes a judgment call. We can't afford to take the to take some of the risk that we could that before we took before when we gambled on some of these folks who had great potential, but we given the uh, Given the, the times, uh, we have to we can't afford to send students out there that can't pass flex. So there are always compromises, but I think that the school's more important than the than the potential risk. I see. So. Well, thank you, Doctor John. Now uh, you've given me a pretty good uh, resume, and, but do you have any any lasting thoughts about? Uh, your role in the future? Oh, I don't think so. I think I said it before. I just think that it's been a great personal opportunity for me. I, I think it's funny, you know, my family, all osteopathic, there's 16 of us, depending on how you want to count. My father and my stepfather were in osteopathic educational side of the street. My stepfather was in there for 50 years, the president of the school for 30. And his name? Uh, Richard McBain, yeah. president of Chicago School. I never foresaw, I never foresaw, and I'm sure he didn't either, that I would be involved in a, with an osteopathic college in my career. Uh, I'm sure he would have been as delighted as I am to uh, see this happen. But I just, uh, you know, it's a great, it's a great institution. It's going to be better and better and better, and it's been a, a great opportunity for me. Well, I know that you're looking forward to uh, the uh, osteopathic research possibilities. There's no question that we'll begin to, as we develop the faculty and uh, that kind of a resource, that we'll, we'll, we, that's a place where we haven't established a mark yet, and we need to. And if we don't, uh, we'll be uh, open to some criticism that we deserve. But I'm, I think that we'll see that happen in the next few years. I really do. Good. Well, I just, I don't know that I'll be around, but I hope you're around to see it uh, take part or take place. It's been a pleasure to be with you today, Dr. John Peckham, who is the Associate Dean of General Medicine. <laughs> Got that part. Yeah. Thank you very much.